All right. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Joanna Dolan with RMS Titanic Reflections. This is a special edition of Deep Conversations. Our special guest this evening is Dr. David Gallo, and we are here to talk about what's next for Titanic. I'm sure some of you have heard some of the rumors about some things going on at RMS Titanic Inc. And Dr. Gallo is here to give us his opinion on what has been happening behind the scenes and what's next for Titanic. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Gallo. Um, we're also joined tonight by um, fellow admin team member uh, Kipper Fox. Um, he's with RMS Titanic Reflections and with uh, Fox Star Line. So thanks for joining us, Kipper. Uh, we're going to let Dr. Gallo um, just let us know what's going on, and then we'll take some uh, questions from the comment sections and so, <clears throat> comment section. So if you have anything to add to the discussion, or if you have some questions for Dr. Gallo, uh, please comment below. And again, thanks for joining us tonight, Dr. Gallo. Thanks, Joanne. Thanks, Kipper. Um, and thank you, everybody. Um, I've gotten a lot of texts over the past uh, 10 days or so with all sorts of rumors about the company. I don't work for the company. I mean, I don't, I'm not an employee of the company. I was a consultant to the company. So I don't know exactly what's going on behind the corporate walls. I know that uh, Bretton Hunchak, who was the uh, CEO of the company, has left the company. And uh, I know the company is still strong and moving forward. I, you know, I don't know exactly what path they're going to take, but I just wanted to chat a little bit about where we were uh, before COVID. And, uh, you know, I, having been on that side of the uh, behind the doors, it, it was a difficult place to be because uh, we had the, uh, sometimes it felt like the weight of the world against the company because uh, you know we were called great i was called a grave robber a uh a, let's see what was it a uh, ruthless grave robber i had no idea there were nice grave robbers but i was a ruthless grave robber a, a greedy treasure hunter and a bunch of other lovely names and uh, uh that was all about the marconi room about the plan to uh recover the marconi and uh, you know, I want to dispel some of these rumors because uh, if you read some of the things that were written that we were going to tear into the ship and and cause all sorts of damage and rip things, you know, it was never that. In fact, the expedition meant the, it was meant to carry on the work we began in 2020, which uh, you, see, you see some of that behind you there, and you know the, that's what this thing that cover photo. Oh, <laughs> there you go. The cover photo and that geo is uh, from the 2020 expedition. Um, so uh, let's just talk about Marconi. The uh, you know we we had recognized for some time that the ship was degrading, like everybody knows, well, that's been degrading, and particularly around the area above the Marconi room, and uh, to the point where you could see bits of it through holes in the deck or a ceiling, depending on how you want, how you want to look at it. And so the only thing we, you know, everything you do with Titanic, by the way, has to go through the judge. It has to be planned. It has to be uh, submitted and then it's reviewed. And, uh, and then you have to go before the judge and she's no easy uh, hurdle to get over. You know, she's very protective of the ship and she should be. So uh, this notion that we were out, you know, running around willy nilly is the word I hear a lot doing what we want to do. Everything you touch, she has to approve. So uh, what we asked her for was not, hey, we want to go rip the Marconi out. We said, uh, you know, there, there are places we want to go take a really good look at the deck above Marconi, up the roof around Marconi. We know there are some large openings. There were in 20. 2010 and we assume they're going to be larger still today and uh, with the right team this is the formula the right team the right talent right technology we were pretty confident actually we we're very confident that we could reach down and salvage one or two pieces of the marconi nothing big 
nothing bolted. There would be no sawing or yanking or anything like that. Uh, like there's some thought that the telegraph key may have been there. So, um, and so we never said we're going to do it. We said we'd like her permission that that on the spot if we decided that we better do it, uh, that we we had her permission to do it. And I and uh, you know from my perspective, if I was going to be co-expedition leader, um, it was agreed. There, there were two others that if any one of us decided it was going to be too risky, we wouldn't do it at all. You know, we just would leave it the way it was. But, you know, what showed up in the media, despite what the reporter said, was always this rip and tear and uh, plunder and, you know, all this stuff. Uh, so, you know, almost everything we tried to do with the company was met with some sort of resistance, which really bothered me. Uh, the company, uh, when I was, I, I began at Woods Hole in 1986, right after Bob Ballard found Titanic and, and explored it. And uh, I always kept it at arm's length because it wasn't what I did. You know, I was a scientist. I wasn't a Titanic uh, person. I'm still not a Titanic person, not really. And, um, uh, but I think I was with Bob when we heard that George Tullock and the team was out there on Titanic and recovering artifacts. And uh, from that day forward, we be began saying that it was grave robbing, that uh, you don't go to Gettysburg with a shovel, all these things, which was unfortunate. And uh, uh, one thing I remind you is back then, there were about three different groups that could go to Titanic, uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic, uh, the French, with their submarine and I think maybe the Russians or the Japanese but you had to be one of those today if you've got a couple hundred thousand dollars you can get a ship and a robot or a dredge and off you go so that's a very different story at Titanic today anyway so at Woods Hole and I was with Billy Lane who you probably if you know me you hear me talk about Billy quite a bit that's uh, footage from his cameras behind behind me. Oh, by the way, that's the footage should be uh, credited to RMS Titanic Inc. Um, so, uh, you know, the thing was that we were for the longest time prohibited after 1987 for, for talking about Titanic. Certainly we're not allowed to go visit the exhibits. And I was told more than once that if we did uh, uh, do that, that we, it would cost us our jobs. And uh, it was meant seriously. It wasn't an, an idle threat. So we stayed away. But, uh, but at the same time, we were, you know, uh, calling RMS Titanic all sorts of names, saying this is not the way to do things. But so one day, Bill Lang and I wandered into one of the exhibits from RMS Titanic, Inc. That one, the, the, the one, present RMS Titanic, Inc. has nothing to do with the uh, actions of the initial company. Uh, they probably shouldn't have kept the same name, but uh, so we wandered into the exhibits and what I saw just was amazing. You know, I saw families come in. I saw young people, old people, every uh, demographic you can imagine. And the look on the children's faces or on some of the adults, it was powerful. It was emotional. And the thing that I liked most about it is it was authentic. It was an experience. You know, most people don't get the privilege of seeing Titanic like that behind me. And uh, I always felt like, you know, if you were one of the academic elite, sure, you get to go see Titanic. Not many people are going to question you. If you're uh, affluent, put down a hundred thousand bucks, sure. But for the normal person, and Titanic's got a globe full of people that love that ship and the legacy of that ship. Uh, but for the normal person, you don't have a chance. But here was your chance, you know, to go to the exhibits and actually see face to face a legitimate, authentic piece of that of that ship. And so after seeing that, I started to change my mind and, you know, went to one, two, three different exhibits and I was blown away by the whole thing. So in the back of my mind, I started thinking, wow, you know, let's see we are watching these people have an experience of their lifetime with families together and whatnot. And we're sitting here saying that they're, they're uh, um, supporting grave robbing. It was really starting to bug me and Billy. 
two. So uh, 1998, I'm sitting at my desk. I'm sorry, it was not 1998, it was 2008. Sitting at my desk and a knock on the door, in, in walks P.H. Narzolet, uh, famous from Titanic, but also a French Navy captain, and the then CEO of Titanic, Armas Titanic, Inc., Chris Devino. This is like the devil showing up in, in my door, you know, at Woods Hole. And, uh, uh, you know, they said to me, well, we want to have an expedition to Titanic and we'd like Woods Hole to be involved and that you and Billy would be one some of the co-leaders. Uh, and it would be all science, no recovery, no touching anything, just science. And uh, bring your best cameras and do the best work, your best sonars. We had some new tools called the Remus robots, and that's what gave us these incredible maps. If you go on on uh, the internet, Google search on Titanic maps, you'll see that the work of the maps uh, of the sonars, and then you look at the images like that behind me, or the stills, that's the an optical mosaics. That's some of the optics we did. But, but the mission was very different from the usual one. You know, the usual mission to Titanic was like uh, adventure to Titanic. It was always the same thing. You look at the bow, look at the mast, look at the holds, look at the bridge, uh, the grand staircase off the back, maybe over to the stern and then up. So it was always the same kind of railroad trip. And uh, for the first time we said, we want a map the entire wreck site. We don't want to miss anything. Let's do the whole thing. So we had a three mile by five mile map, and then we have a, a one mile by two mile map, and still I think we missed some stuff. Um, and it was very boring because we went up and down and up and down. And uh, it's not what you want to do when you're exploring, but at the end of the day, it was like painting a wall or mowing the lawn or whatever. Um, you know, we had a really nice map of Titanic. My point in that is that this was a real important thing for Titanic because for the first time ever, we had a detailed map. And if you want to manage something, you need to know what you're managing. You can't guess about what you're, you know, you need to know what are, what are we trying to manage. And for the first time, we had a really good look at what was in the debris field, where it was next to one another, and the state of some parts of the, of the, uh, of the hull. Now, incredibly expensive, that little jaunt was, oh, millions, many millions. And it was all borne by RMS Titanic Inc. You know, and uh, I think people don't understand that. Their only income, that company, really, is uh, ticket sales. And you know how many tickets you have to sound, sell to get, you know, $5 million back? A lot of tickets. So basically, I don't think you ever get your money back. So I, I've said before, and it's bothered some people, that there's no entity in my mind that's done more for the legacy of that ship and for the people that sailed on here than RMS Titanic Inc., the present one. First one, too, but uh, the present RMS Titanic Inc. You know, Breton I worked closely with Breton, uh, Hunchak, and uh, I was really impressed because he, uh, you know, we really tried to open up the floodgates a little bit. We went to Europe together. We visited Belfast together, Cherbourg together. Uh, he uh, visited many, many uh, school systems in, in the U.S. The idea was, is let's open the floodgates, not just keep Titanic in, in the uh, U.S., but let's, anyone that wants to have uh, this available to them, we can, we can make it happen, but we wanted to satisfy a wider audience than, than uh, we had. So when I say that, I don't know, you know, you could say, well, Cameron or Ballard or, yeah, uh, but, you know, in terms of doing something for the ship and making a real scientific contribution, I don't think that you can come close to what RMS Titanic uh, did do. Um, so, so that's one thing. So they were spending a lot of money on the research of Titanic, the company was, without many, uh, well, much hope of recovering that money. I guess this is all my opinion. Uh, in 2010, when we went there with our best Titanic, and again, Bill Lang and I were part of Woods Hole, uh, we also had with us uh, NOAA, 
National Oceanographic, National Park Service, and a bunch of other uh, entities. So we had two big government entities. Uh, and uh, uh, the data was tough to work on, but we worked it up and people like you know, Parks and uh, Bill Sauter and the like had their input into the, uh, which was very powerful to have uh, them analyzing some of, some of the data. Um, and come around uh, 20, uh, it's about three years ago, 2019, I think it was around three years ago, uh, after Brent uh, took charge, we decided it was time to get the, uh, the uh, partnership back together again and do part two, which was to use the maps we made to look in more detail at Titanic. Uh, a press release, so we had NOAA again, that everyone said, yes, 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 let's go. Uh, so a press release went out, and that was Holy Thursday of Easter week, in fact. And a uh, press release went out and said, we're going to go back out again. The partnership is still strong. And by that Sunday, uh, Woods Hole decided they were out. I had retired already, but Woods Hole said no. After saying yes, they said no. NOAA dropped out, National Park Service dropped out. Uh, no explanation, never any kind of a letter. They didn't tell me a peep except that it was, it was over. And, uh, and then we ended up, you know, in court. And I think a big part of it was NOAA. Uh, and so every time, not only were they spending money on the data, spending money on getting ready to go out to Titanic, but then going to court, you know, that, that's not cheap either. And so always having to defend yourself. So, uh, and COVID. So everything to me was stacked up against the company. And uh, so it's not surprising, you know, that they ran into, ran into this iceberg. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. I, I hope they take the right course which is uh, to keep collecting information and uh, making it available to the public. I mean, that was my, I'm not a Titanic, I've said this a bazillion times. I'm not a Titanic expert. You know, I'm not a historian. I'm not an enthusiast. My interest is in bringing the deep sea to people. And so if I can help bring Titanic up to the surface, so to speak, uh, in imagery and the like, that's what, they you know, that's what I, I like to do. And I was really looking forward to this uh, next expedition. So I hope they do it again. I'm not sure that I would be involved again because, you know, it's all this stuff uh, is really wears on you after a while. The press headlines that you're a gray robber, treasure hunting creep and all. Uh, uh, it's tough to sit back and just take it. You know, you want to lash out. Uh, but uh um, it's not easy. Sometimes it's better just to keep your mouth shut. Um, what I do hope that doesn't happen is that, uh, you know, there's a, there's an agreement between, uh, France and Canada and I think Italy and England and Ireland and, and the U.S. Uh, to, uh, protect Titanic so that anyone that goes to Titanic has to go through a series of committees and forms and and whatnot before you go out there. That's no way to protect Titanic. I mean, there's nothing stopping uh, from a from a country that's got. Oh, there's the Marconi room behind me there, the ceiling, the deck. You can see how lovely that is. Uh, with just some gaping holes. Um, so there's a a country with all the right kinds of uh, an individual could do it, but a country with uh, the right kinds of tools, and those countries exist, could go to Titanic and take all they want. You know, in a couple of days, they could pick up all sorts of neat stuff. And uh, this notion that this is a bunch of uh, countries are going to protect the ship really bothered me quite a bit. Um, to me, the things that I thought for Titanic was that uh, you need the shipwreck at the bottom of the ocean. That's the mystery of it all. It's the icon of the deep Titanic sitting there. You need to know what shape it's in. So you need to occasionally bring back a piece. You have to do the scientific experiments, but that needs to be there. And then you have the Camerons and the Ballards that do their thing, you know, making the movie, writing a book. 
Um, but, and then though, you have the exhibits. So it's like a four legged stool that you have to have all these things complement one another. But the company never wanted to bring up, uh, you know, I never once in my time with that company. So since 2010, sat at a meeting where we said, we're gonna go out there and grab everything we can grab. Never, never, never once, uh, never uh, entered my mind. You know, the one, if you saw the show, uh, what was it, John, the Titanic? Well, we got the, a cable wrapped around a bit of Titanic from the ROV. I didn't sleep for days. It was one of the worst days of my life. So the idea that we even touched the ship. Uh, yeah, that was in the me... documentary I just watched. That was mm -hmm. my goodness. I, I smiled I after that. I said I looked grumpy the whole exhibition, but then I smiled after that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you can pick on the company all you want. And you know what? I don't mind people that say, um, I think it's grave robbing. It's a grave site. You know, even though we've never seen any human remains, um, undoubtedly there are probably some or were some inside the ship. There may have been some on the sediments, but uh, it's not Gettysburg. And even at Gettysburg, you walk around Gettysburg, people, and everyone that goes to Gettysburg hopes to find a sword or a a bullet or something like that. And we weren't even do, you know, we weren't digging in the sediments. We weren't disrupting anything. Uh, so to compare it to Gettysburg was a bit, was a bit, uh, was a bit crazy. So, you know, uh, I just think the company got a real bad rap for all that. And I'm hoping, oh, I, I was saying that I, I don't mind when people say, I just think it's wrong. I get it. You know, I like it. What I don't like is when people are fed the wrong information and base their decision based on that, like, oh, we see human remains. Now, uh, when they base it on that, that ain't right. So uh, I have a problem with that. And the one thing we promised ourselves is that no matter what it took, and that's why, you know, Breton's been on here several times on, uh, on the, in your, uh, so, what would you call it, uh, groups? Um, I've been here several times. Bill Lang's been here several times um, talking about the data. Uh, and that was a conscious effort to let you know uh, what we were doing, you know, what, what we had in mind. And in, in Congress, we asked you and wanted to know, what do you think that we should be doing uh, with that ship? <clears throat> so going forward, I hope you can be, be as vocal as you are with the new company, however the new company comes out. And I and, and I was saying that you should think my way or, or, you know, I think, make your own decision, but express it, you know, express it to the judge if you want, express it to the company if you want, but, but uh, you have the right to do that. Because I do believe like when like Breton did too, that Titanic belongs to everybody, and it belongs to the future. So you should have a say in this and you should not be this elitist uh, place that only a few people can go. Uh, it should be open to all. You should all have that experience. That's all I have to say. I'm done. I will <laughs> say um, in the conversations that I had with Breton, um, I was impressed how he um, he was very um, adamant about, you know, education with Titanic. Huh. Um, you know, as far as, you know, the current state of RMS Titanic Inc. being very pro-education. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something, um, you know, that I'm very um, passionate about. Um, you know, Titanic has pretty much been kind of wiped from the history books. Um, it's not something that kids study anymore. It's not something you learn about. You don't learn about that period in history anymore. And I think that's something that Breton, you know, under the, you know, his time at RMS Titanic Inc., that was something he was really trying to you know, be proactive about. And so yeah, I really yeah. did admire that in him. Yeah, there were a um, number of that, things like you know, that, forward that. You know, I hope they they do yeah, continue. Uh, you that. know how deep the company was. It was Breton, then it was me, Billy, Bill Sauter, um, mm -hmm. uh, just a handful of us, you know, trying to do a plan an expedition, mm -hmm. process the data from the uh, first expedition, look at education, uh, look at the exhibits, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So it was really uh, stretched very, very uh, thin. Yet we recognize that, you know, we have in our hands 
this incredible icon of the deep mm -hmm. and it deserved to be treated uh, with as much care uh, as as uh, as you can imagine so um, uh, yeah when i go into schools to substitute teach i always take my titanic tote bag and i talk about titanic to the classes that i teach and they're like miss dola why does um why are people still talking about titanic so i talk about you know, when you go on a cruise ship or any kind of ship, what are they going to do first off? They're going to do a lifeboat drill. And I'm like, why? Like, because of Titanic. And I'm like, yeah. you know, you know, why are there, um, you know, agencies out there that monitor uh, icebergs today? I'm like, because of Titanic, you know, and I'm like, um, you know, there's yeah. so many other aspects to Titanic. There's, you know, just more than the historic aspect. There's biology, there's science, there's technology. You know, I said, there's so many other aspects to it. You know, there's so many things to learn from it even today and you know, they're all like in awe of it they're like wow really you know and so you know i try to really work all that into it um and i think that rms titanic inc was really trying to you know move forward and you know, into the next generation with all of that too yeah yeah so well i, I mean the whoever the new ceo is you know will I, I hope continue so. to be open with the public about all of that yeah but you the know, plan Brett really was that. trying to do First of all, you make a good point. I mean, if I had on my uh, vest, my Titanic, if it said uh, something very important, climate change, blah, 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 working group, you know, no one would say anything to me. Every time I wore that vest, Expedition Titanic, mm -hmm. everywhere, everywhere, people would stop me and ask me about Titanic. Mm -hmm. And I just read this uh, the other day, so maybe it was online here, uh, is that uh, most people that I've talked to did not get their interest from the movie or Bob's book. I don't yeah. get it, but because uh, I would have thought otherwise, but it's, uh, they came to it other ways, you know, through mm -hmm. uh, Lord's book and through their parents and grandparents talking about the uh, handing down the story. Anyway, the plan was just like you said, Joanna, it was, uh, you know, we have RMS Titanic, and then we have uh, on this arc that includes you, the enthusiasts that actually understand the ship. I mean, I would tell we don't understand all the bits of the <laughs> ship and all that. I mean, that's something you do. So we have this arc and then with education over here. So that, uh, but it's all one piece. It's not like Titanic and oh yeah, let's do that. And let's mm -hmm. do that, you know what about this? It's just an arc of taking the information we gather here and getting out, getting it out, out to the, to the people. So it'll be really interesting to see what kind of direction the company takes. I, I'm really hopeful, you know, that it will be a good one. You know, another CEO, another direction. Yeah, it's horrible. I really uh, feel bad about that, but I understand. Like I said, you know, the uh, constant barrage to being in court all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, the thing about NOAA and National Park Service pulling out of the partnership. That was really mm -hmm. weird and we're told too that was that without was an explanation hit. that was really strange and i haven't really pushed hard to find out what happened but it was embarrassing and it was stupid um, well we have um believe it or not we have a few uh viewers and a few questions coming in um michael standard um he says a lot of people who are actually who actually know what they're talking about have described salvage as a great way to turn a large fortune fortune into a small one. He <laughs> yeah, said, personally, I think George Tulloch had the right idea. Um, yes. Well, <laughs> it's a very, yeah, th that's a great, thanks, thanks for the comment. Oh, uh, sure, that's, that's right. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know any real rich treasure hunters, by the way. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, at least in my career and Bill Lang's career, we've gone out of our way so people wouldn't point to us and say treasure hunter. So, you know, it was all anything we touched on the bottom had a, had a scientific background behind it. But uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And George, you know, back in uh, the late 80s, it was a different time then. And uh, for all they knew back then, someone could have come right behind them, could have, and just cleaned out the site. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't blame him at all for what he did. I, I was very impressed with George when I met him a couple of times. Again, here's a person that I called every name in the book and, and to the media. But uh, when I met him, I said, oh my God, this is like one of the most genuine persons that ever worked on that ship. 
you know, he really I think wanted he had a dream. To, he wanted amazing. to bring Titanic to back to people. You know, he wanted to bring the he people of it. Titanic you know, back the guy, to the guy yeah. really, really, really meant it. And uh, so kudos to him. Uh, but, you know, uh, Titanic today keeps getting saddled. They've never picked up anything, but they get saddled with uh, mm -hmm. picking up uh, 5,000 artifacts that people think it was, you know, last year or last month. And mm -hmm. back in the, we're talking about the late 80s for, for the most part. Yeah, but good comment. Um, then our friend Michael Brady, um, he said, this is fascinating, David. Thanks for doing this. He said, was there one particular Titanic artifact that moved you or spoke to you the most? Yeah. Um, um, <clears throat> well, every time you saw David there uh, with a little piece of rope hanging down from it. So I think uh, those, it's not really an artifact, but those spots on the ship where you know what happened there, how uh, emotional that had to be, how powerful that had to be always mean something to you. The cups on the seafloor would say RMS Titanic Inc. Uh, but what gets me today, I don't think I have one, but you know, they're still conserving some of the artifacts. So when I would walk into that room, even today, well, months ago, uh, it would take my breath away because there you are face to face again with Titanic and it's just hard to make that, it's hard to make that routine. You know, it's uh, so uh, I'd say I don't have a particular one. Oh, you know what? I, the flares sitting on the bottom, the, the signal flares. We just saw those in the sea floor. Background. I think that's pretty cool because they were, you know, meant to do other things and uh, sit there at the bottom. Yeah. Um, Michael Stander also says most salvage companies live on the very razor's edge of insolvency, not to get into the personalities, but from evidence I've seen, the worst had was Arnie Geller. Oh, we've talked about this one so many times, Steve. Yeah, and, yep. I, and I missed that whole episode. I, I came right sort of after that, so I missed that whole uh, uh, episode. So, I, you know, I've heard a lot of things and most of them not uh, very pleasant. So I can't comment on it, but I, I, I know where you're going with it. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. I could talk about that one, but I'm not, I don't want to get into all that tonight. Um, Pete Poston or Poston, please forgive me if I'm not saying that right. He says, what specific parts of the wireless would be recovered? Maybe kind of touched on that a minute ago. You know, um, I'm, here's how little I know about Titanic. It, it was, <laughs> it was mostly some of the wiring and maybe a panel or two that are, if you look in the online, uh, you'll see photos of it. Um, so it's that bit and it made me, uh, and usually next to it, they have their recreation, which is the shiny little radio sitting there. And one thing I always worried about was that if we brought back the, those bits of the, first of all, it doesn't look anything like a radio and it would look like some dead sea creature, uh, it would be covered with glop and, uh, you know, so that, uh, people would say, well, it, all this, um, bus was about that. Um, so uh, yeah, if, if you see it online, you'll see what it looks like now. And it's that's the little bit that's hanging there and the telegraph key. If uh, again, we uh, think we may have seen it in the uh, sediments of the room. Um, I still have all of that stuff. I don't think I'm allowed to share it anymore, though. What's that? All that stuff that uh all the stuff that um, RMSTI shared back in the day. I think you could. Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I think mm, you could. Probably not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It had all the detailed stuff and then the stuff and the stuff and the recovery, recovery plans and whatnot. Yeah. Mm. Anywho, moving on. Um, let's see. Dan Curley says, for me, I find it strange. Most people seem to find, seem fine buying pieces of coal, but the wireless ending up in a museum is controversial. And he said he's quite confused <laughs> by that. Yeah, I um, keep forgetting you, about the coal. Really, when you think about it, you know, their plan was to go in through existing holes in the ceiling yeah. to not cause any further damage. 
I've seen, you know, their plan. I wish I could share it, but I can't. I don't know. Um, but I, I mean, if, I thought you were given the rights to share it, but. Um, I, and Dr. You said that, you know, as co expedition leader, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't authorize recovering the Marconi if any damage was to come to Titanic. Right. In, what, in any way, shape, or form. Right. Have so the they had a really good plan for recovering the Marconi system. Yeah. Yeah, here's the funnel, here's the grand staircase, and here's the big gash Dave Gallo left. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. 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 So and, I mean they no. they really had a good plan for going and recovering it. The judge in Virginia had approved it because it was such a good plan. Yeah. I didn't come up you with know, the plan, but uh, Troy Laune did. He's about the you know, everyone we had, again, you gotta go back to uh the team. Uh, and you want the best people with the, the best talent you can get, uh, the technology, you want the best mm -hmm. technology, and then you want the game plan, you know, what's the mission, those three things. So it's like a symphony orchestra. You get musicians, uh, good musicians, uh, right instruments, and then the music that you want to play, and hopefully some of the conductor that raises the baton and everyone works together. Uh, but but it doesn't mean having the newest uh instruments it doesn't mean having the smartest or most talented musician it's the comfort they have with their technology and the way they mesh with the rest of the team that makes it powerful and I, i've said this before uh the heroes of the titanic expedition and almost every deep sea expedition is not the bozo standing up in front of the microphones you know i'm privileged i have had that role but it's people whose names you never hear of you know it's a uh, packard and um, uh, Steve Gegg and Tom Crook and uh, Evan Kovacs and Marion Kovac. It's just people that, you know, and there were times on Titanic, we were out there when we, when we weren't running from hurricanes for weeks. And I would, some people were up for days and I would have to make them go to sleep. Uh, you know, they were like uh, the walking dead on the ship. And that always uh, impressed. You know, we also, uh, we're fortunate enough to find the missing aircraft, Air France Flight 447. Same thing, you know, I was so impressed with how these people who get no great um, exposure, we certainly don't get like a big bonus, there's no such thing, um, but it's pride that they have. And it's, uh, you know, in the case of Titanic, we're thinking about people, the kids, we want to do this right. In the case of Air France, it was the families that lost and loved ones of the people that died. But uh, so don't the person in front of the microphone, they, you know, you just uh, that's very nice. Now get out of the way, and let's see who really did the, uh, who really made this happen. Yeah. Um, Terry Bay says, um, I talk about Titanic because in a lot of situations today. Um, and uh, the, because in a lot of situations today, even during the pandem pandemic, we are seeing some of the same mistakes made in the disaster. The disaster represents a lot of arrogance and being complacent concerning warnings and insufficient safety measures. A lot of this is happening today. It's a very, She's very good wrong. point. And I, I guess, is that a metaphor? I guess it's a an okay. metaphor. Uh, which uh, whatever it is, <laughs> uh, but but yeah, exactly. You know, I always think of the same thing with climate change too. That you know we've gotten the warning, but still we're going full speed ahead into the into the future without thinking much. Now you could say, well, that's not what the Titanic was doing, but I mean, you get the picture that the, we're heading out uh, with this uh, uh, hubris and this uh, dependence on technology, um, and. Uh, you're not going to win one with nature. It just doesn't happen. So, um, but that, that's a great, uh, that's a great way to look. I use that all the time. Yeah. Not heeding the warnings. Um, let's see. Dan says, Dan Curley says, that being said, I don't disagree with buying coal. <laughs> you know, I don't have a shelf full of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't see. <laughs> Oh, me. Also, that's an awful lot different than, <laughs> I mean, the seafloor is littered with stuff like that. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of bits of coal and, and artifacts. Um, and the seafloor has got a whole bunch of other stuff <laughs> sprinkled on top of there, too. So, 
uh, you know, I think it's pretty cool to have a piece of coal that was actually out there on the Titanic. You know, we make our little, uh-oh, I used to have them here, our Titanic cups, our styrofoam cups. Uh-oh, thieves. Uh, it's not the same as buying coal, but in a way it's like souvenir uh, that we put styrofoam cups on the outside of the sub or robot that big and decorate it, say Titanic, and then when it comes back it's that big. And they're pretty cool looking, but yeah, I mean, there's all these little things that I don't find them to be, uh, um, you know, anything bad. Nothing wrong with some coal here and there. Um, Michael Brady says, thank you for the answer, David. The davits still get to me, especially the one that stands up right on the starboard side forward. Yep. yep. I said, I see that in, the, <laughs> you just can see, <laughs> you know, it's in the ship itself. Uh, it was like, I counted, it was like 25 steps from my cabin to the laboratory where there was 24 hours a day, uh, 3D Titanic. So put glasses on, there you are. And, uh, you know, when you're in the submarine, you're looking out a, a window about that big. But in the, you've got here, you've got wraparound monitors, big monitors, and uh, multiple cameras. Mm -hmm. So you get this sweeping view. And the fact that, uh, you know, I could get up any time, day or night, and go down there see Titanic but uh, you could always tell when there was something like that on the screen something poignant or something that really emotional because there'd be a different kind of a vibe to the laboratory when people you could tell people just wondering well, you know, wow that's uh, that's uh, pretty important so uh, yeah. Michael Standard says uh, he's held one of those chunks of coal in his hands at the Pigeon Forge conference back in 2019 says my albums and my personal page are all open book if you care to drop by. Speaking of the Pigeon Forge conference, Dr. Gallo, are you planning on coming in our, in August? Absolutely not. It, I thought I saw your name on uh, yes, on the. Uh, no, I wanted. To, I just wanted to get a letter from Bill Willard. That's all. Yes. Yeah, so, no, I'm. Looking forward, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. It which it made me think about this again. Uh, <laughs> You know, until Breton showed up, that group of uh, elites would not dream of showing up here. Uh, or maybe I'm wrong. Did they ever, anyone else ever just show up here and talk about, I mean, of the people that did the work out of it? I don't think so, at least none that I've known of. And uh, so, you know, hanging out at something like Pitch and Forge, I'm really, I'm honored and looking forward to it. I really am, you know. Oh, I'm looking yeah, forward to it, too. I was just like talking about it today with my mom. I was like, you have it marked on your calendar, right? Because I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> Maybe uh, the kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, I think I've said it in the beginning. I'm not saying it for sympathy, but, you know, my time with Titanic, uh, I think, is coming. You know, I retired. Um, I've got a lot more other stuff to do. Uh, and there are a lot of younger people, you know, old. <laughs> it's a lot of younger people that can do this. So I'm thinking less in 2010, I said, that's my last expedition. And, um, you know, it may, may well be, I don't know, but I'm going to uh, keep my uh, commitments that I've made, uh, at least most of them. And so yeah, Pigeon Forge, sure. Yeah. You're gonna go do Pigeon Forge, and did you say one more Titanic? What? <laughs> I'm gonna leg wrestle Bill Willard at Pigeon Forge. Did he? Did he? Did he <laughs> and we'll be streaming that live right here. I just want to say that right now. Yeah. No, of course I'm gonna be do that. I, No, I'm looking right for. Here. I wanted to go. Um, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, I think there was political upheaval last time where I couldn't go. Something was going on. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm really... oh, I know what it was, but I'm not going to mention it. All right. Well, I'm really looking forward to. Uh... It was some legal stuff, I think. I don't know. No. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it had to do with Ballard. It all right. it all comes back to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I'm going to put this picture up here. No. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Just don't think for a moment that everything's hunky dory behind the scenes. I mean, it's a day and night uh, squabble that goes on behind the scenes of, you know, I watched it for years and years when I was at Woods Hole without getting sucked in. 
next thing I knew I was in the middle of the whirlpool getting pulled down. But yeah, it's a very brisk um, uh, business. Yeah. So let's just try oh, to like. You know what? Go no, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Joanne. Uh, you know, the Ocean Gate is going uh, in June, I think. And I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I think, you know, I was out there with the Russians when they were diving on Titanic. And, uh, you know, I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, people sure had a good time. And as long I just worry, you know, I have this horrible nightmare that the current takes a sub and just sweeps it across the deck and pulls the railing off would be very easy to do. Boy, that would change the whole look of the ship. It really would. So um, I worry about it in that way. And I hope everyone comes back safe. You know, we don't normally die with three people. They're talking about five people. Um, but we'll see how people feel when they come back from that, from that expedition. Yeah. I just have to hope it goes well. I mean, they're taking some seasoned experts with them. I think Rory's going, yeah. right? Yeah, that'd David be awesome. Cannon's going. There are some, some good people going on those expeditions, you know, right? So, yeah, I would love to go out to see with Rory. I've never had the f opportunity to go to see with Rory, but I would love to uh, <clears throat> have that opportunity. Um, so I'm hoping for the best there. I wish I had $125,000. I would go. Back in the uh, 80s, it was 50,000 with the uh, but 90s, it was 50,000 with the Russians to go when they're mere submarines. Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, they were very, very careful. I and, mean, you know, the thing that got me is there were people that were doctors and lawyers and whatnot working on board the Keldish, the support ship. They were washing dishes and keeping floors for like $4 a, a week or and at the same time, they were seeing all these valuable things on the seafloor that they could have grabbed, and they never touched one. Not a, not a bag full of money, not an artifact, nothing. You know, they just, uh, I think Anatoly Segalovich, that's the kind of respect he had for Titanic. And they, too, got bashed in the media quite a bit uh, for going to Titanic, but I never saw, again, people that were so downtrodden, and yet they had this incredible spirit and cohesiveness and it was all for titanic pretty amazing to see yeah um i think that i mean you say that you're not a titanic person but i think that <laughs> i think for people who are titanic people they are just kind of like that um no you guys know a lot more you know, than uh, people people that are titanic people are just like that you know it's not about the money it's not about fame it's not about fortune it's just it's about titanic oh, passion you know? yeah yeah that's why i, I kind of this elitist you know you kind of know who i'm talking about but this yeah. elitist attitude where it <laughs> happens to be one of many things and i'm getting paid to do it i'm a professional explorer but you know i don't know i mean i know that's a window <laughs> The window and it's got rust on it. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't. Uh, you know, I know some things about the ship, but um, but but the, the passion that you have, uh, it's not your job, but yeah, you're pulled into it. That really shows through. I did my best to get Parks kicked off the 2010 expedition. I fought. <laughs> did not want him on board. What's this guy doing here? A hobbyist? You got to be kidding. We need all the space. I was having a fit and History Channel insisted, and it would have been one of the biggest mistakes of my career uh, because uh, he was incredibly valuable to have there um, on board that ship, which made me understand that you you people uh, have got such a passion and an interest. Y'all, you, yeah, you have such a, <laughs> such a passion for the subject that it's, uh, you know, it's very valuable, it really is. Um, I don't know how I mean, to call this group. You enthusiasts, you go come back, come up with a name for what you are. Enthusiasts. Uh, I don't even know if I like that sorry. so much. I don't. I really don't know what it is, but it's like a con 
next gen for people who really are Titanic people. Um, I don't know. Do we all obsess great? No, I wouldn't say that. But I mean, it, a lot of people like myself are people who came to become interested in it. Um, you know, when we were very young, mm -hmm. you know, it's just something small that just kind of like, oh, you know, like for me, I watched a few minutes of Race the Titanic. And then shortly after that, I, mean, I didn't even see the whole movie. I just saw a few minutes of it when I was six years old. And then I yeah. saw on the news um, shortly thereafter where the wreck had been discovered. And that was just it for me. You know, I was interested in it ever since. Um, and I don't know why. Yeah, you know what, what I thought like was, uh, 42 what? years old and still very, very much interested in it. What, what My I mom bought me a, a, sorry. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> My mom bought me, a, uh, my mom and my cousin bought me a copy of Titanic Adventure at a time. And the first time I played it, I was like, well, what is this ship? And then I watched the movie and then the, those two is what got me started. And, and I'm 31 and I'm still learning and I still want to learn about Titanic. It, 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 she draws you. It just It's something yeah. that's hard to explain. Do you want to address just something? It's history, you know? Yep. It sure is. There's something there for everybody, you know, for historians and anthropologists. And, and you know, it got me uh, even when it was uh, in those early days when I wasn't really uh, into Titanic uh, and didn't want to be, was Ken Marshall's paintings. Because we did not do those, uh, take photos like that. Uh, we didn't have the cameras. We didn't have the navigation. We didn't have the computer power to do what Ken did and I was blown away by that whole uh, you know I had that that cover photo of his with the bow for the submarine sitting up there uh, wow you know the guy's amazing but, uh, you know everything I thought we found in 2010 that I'll show that Ken Marcel he already had it <laughs> just uh, just amazing he brings her to life he's one of the few artists that can bring the ship back to life Definitely. Yeah. I mean, my first Titanic book, you know, was just almost cover to cover with Ken Marshall's work. And yeah. it was, I hate to say it, Dave, but it was a Ballard book. But I was more impressed by Ken's <laughs> work. Than... <laughs> I got, hey, I owe Bob Ballard. We don't agree on Titanic at all. <laughs> uh, but I owe him my career. You know, it was, here it is, the very, the very thing that got me, the very, copy right here this this geez that national Did geographic you know? <laughs> 1976 that got me out of the shoe department where i was working and interested in titanic an article bob ballard wrote about exploring the deep so and then he hired me in 87 you know so i owe the guy a lot i really do gave me my career just don't agree on titanic that's all he's wrong <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so to just kind of recap. All right, so for those of you who missed the very beginning, um, Dan says, what about Bob? Oh, goodness. Um, what about Bob? Anyway, so to just kind of recap, for those of you who may have turned in late, tuned in late, look at what is wrong with my mouth? I cannot talk tonight. Um, so in recent days, RMS Titanic Inc. has had yet another upset internally. They have let go their, the CEO, Brett and Hunchak. Uh, I don't right? know if they let him go or he, he left. I, I really well, either don't. way, Brett yeah. Hunchak is not, no longer the CEO of RMS Titanic Inc. They have a new CEO. Do we know who that is right now? I thought they were supposed to announce it. Somebody's bound to know who it is. Who's the new CEO? I bet I know who knows. It's David Gallo. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. So once again, there's a huge turnover at RMS Titanic Inc. We're just kind of speculating as to what the future holds for the actual wreck of the Titanic and for the future of the company. Um, Dr. Gallo has graciously joined us and he's you know, just been talking about his history with the 
if I look like the, I look like the you know, full anything moon. might happen and what we hope will happen in the future. I look like the full moon rising over the Titanic site. For the, I don't like <laughs> Why does it look like that? That's the Titanic uh, at uh, daybreak right there. But I'm sorry, Joanne. I've interrupted you, of course. That's okay. Well, I do look like the moon sitting there. This giant <laughs> round thing. For those of you who know, don't know Dr. Gallo, it's hard to carry on a like serious conversation <laughs> with him sometimes. <laughs> All right. Fun. I don't joke around anymore. Um, that funny. we have another question and this is from, um, a Titanic artist, um, and I'm going to murder his first name because I don't know how to pronounce it. Please forgive me. I think it's Vassilie. I don't know. Um, I am so sorry, but he says, hi to all. Great talk. I have a question for David. What are some of the most advanced technologies used currently in rec mm. exploration and gaining mm. data or data, depending on how you want to pronounce that? Yeah. For example, is um, what is wrong with me? Is um, lidar tech used extensively? Can we expect that eventually complete rec or complete site to be three D scanned in yeah. high detail? Yes. Yeah, that's a great question, and you're absolutely right on the money. Is that, uh, you know, we took the time to go take uh, thousands of photographs and mosaic them together, uh, but that doesn't give you shape information. Except then we had a algorithm that allowed us to get volumetric shapes and stuff. But with lidar, you know, and the thing that cracks me up is now lidar. Well, my phone disappeared in front of my very eyes. If you've got an iPhone 12, there's lidar on the on the iPhone 12. <laughs> Um, which is amazing. She's not sitting here like, where's my phone? I do that all the time. I'm like, where's my lot. phone? So, uh, you know, we think uh, that what we plan to do is to sweep up and down the hull a couple of times and back and forth. So we uh, cover it completely with LIDAR. So then we've got the ship in 3D, both in terms of shape, but also in terms of, of texture and images, and then also do the debris field. and. Uh, so I think that's one of the powerful ones. The other thing we need to do is get some experiments going to find out how long the ship will really be there because everything, it's all a guess. 25 years, 25,000 years. Um, who uh, who knows? I mean, someone, well, I don't want to get into that, what happened to the experiments, but uh, yeah, someone, uh, I mean, th that needs to be done. I wanted to put a hydrophone on the Titanic so we could hear what was going on. You know, there are... Uh, uh, currents like rivers that are the wind that blow across Titanic from different directions that are different speeds. And uh, there's got to be metal flapping around and things like that. Uh, and Titanic's getting sandblasted. So I also wanted to put some current meters. You know, it's science, 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 science. Um, yeah. And there's things I wanted to, to take a look at that was uh, like the wake. As the bow plowed in, there's a wake behind it. Um, and I thought that would be great to have a look at that. So, uh, um, but but all of its new technology, just as you said, you know, it's LIDAR and uh, new kinds of sensors. So, hey, one thing, uh, here I go again. Uh, you know, there's a submarine, people would argue that the robots are 24 hours a day. You can have multiple robots. Each one has multiple cameras, plus all sorts of other sensors on it. Submarine, it's a 10 hour day, basically. Um, it's uncomfortable. Uh, you can't see anything really. Uh, but to me, it's like going to a sporting event or a concert live. Uh, if you go say a sporting event, uh, you know, you've got to drive to the stadium, you got to park, you got to get into your seat, it's crowded. People are, uh, you know, jostling all around. Um, uh, whereas at home, you know, you can sit there in the comfort of your home and go to the bathroom, get something to eat. Um, you have color commentary on uh, re re rewind on TV. Uh, but when you're there, it does something to you, to you personally, that you're not going to get out of a robot, which is uh, to get into your spirit. And to me, so it's not about, in the case of the submarine, 
It's not about collecting data. It's about what that does to you being there on that spot. So yeah, robots collect more data, but that's not a, is that what it's all about? You know, robots collecting data. Um, so just thought uh, based on that, that question that I should say, uh, say that, which I did do. <laughs> So, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Um, why are you? Why is everybody looking at me? Huh? It just got really quiet. Uh, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Were you guys talking about Bob again? <laughs> There's the background. Oh, I love that. Oh, is that the rec site? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh aerial that's, view of the rec site. Oh, that's a stern. You can tell because it's got the debris field. All those lumpy bumpy things right there. Oop, my arm's gone now. Just, <laughs> yeah. And you should see the big those uh strange other pieces are there someplace too. I should sometime do a Oh, these things over here, I didn't even talk about that. Um, oh, come on, up there. Those are dunes. There's some huge underwater dunes that are moving across the seafloor. They're well known. Uh, I didn't I, I didn't know until we saw them, but they're, they dwarf, dwarf Titanic, some of these dunes, and they're, they're in motion. Also, the slope up here, um, what in the world is that? There's a lump here, I don't understand that. <laughs> um, there have been landslides in this area too, so it's not out of the question that uh, Titanic could end up in the middle of a landslide. It's possible. Um, so there's a lot more than just the Titanic. The seafloor is really interesting there too. So, so has been here already. my phone. What? I'm trying to keep up with all the comments. So did that answer that question? Yes Good. to LIDAR and, okay. and more. Yeah, yes to LIDAR. All right. John Wilton says, with further deterioration of the wreck, do you feel items will become fully exposed? It would recover. It would be OK to recover items from the inside. Oh, from the inside of the ship. Well, that's controversial. Well, yeah, I don't know uh, why it's, I mean, you have to make a decision and it's not up to me to make that decision. It wouldn't have been up to me about that's something we want to recover either because it's important historically or, well, it would have to be that or something scientifically. But uh, I mean, there's, there's probably, I mean, there is a lot of stuff inside. So, uh, you know, someone needs to make that decision. I, I don't think it should be picked clean. You know, I don't, like I said, you need the ship down there in as uh, pristine a shape as you can have it uh, because it adds to the mystery. You know, you still want to see those cups sitting on the dressers and the bed linens and all that stuff uh, on the ship. You don't want to just grab everything from the ship. So I, I think it would be the rules, I think, are good that uh, yeah. no taking anything from the inside of the uh, of the ship. Now, I do think we need to penetrate further into the ship somewhere. We, uh, you know, I'm just curious in the bow uh, whether there are remains there. You know, it's, uh, it'd be important to know that. And, uh, you know, dis despite the fact we haven't seen any remains, we treat it like a gravesite. And uh, with that kind of reverence, because, you know, in the past, you'd say we commit the ship and the souls aboard for eternity to the deep. That's what we said, right? Returning, it's gone, leaves the surface. But now what we're saying is that, you know, we cross that border this eternity. So when we do it, you know, we go there with really honestly a sense of reverence. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not like uh, a trip, uh, you know, it's only two miles beneath the surface. So it's uh, on land in a car, it takes a couple of minutes, but you really are going to another planet. You know, that's the average depth of the ocean the pressure is in, uh, incredible. It's pitch black. It's freezing cold. So uh, it's not routine by any stretch of the imagination. So all these things come into play. 
And like I said, we don't go there like it's a, another day in the park. We go there with a lot of reverence for the site. I think the main like objective with the recovery of the Marconi system was, you know, it's it's great historical value, um, you know, and the fact that, you know, the Marconi room is in danger of collapse eventually because it's, you know, one of the sub, am I, am I saying it right, a substructure or yeah. am I saying, it? okay, because it's on top of the ship and it's yeah. made of thinner metal and eventually that will collapse, right? Well, it is. I mean, um, you can put your unlike in. unlike the bow, I mean, unlike the the rest of the ship, the hull, which is made of the thick steel that will be there for a long time, that's a structure on top of the ship that's probably going to collapse, much like yeah. the captain's well, quarters and the, the officers' yeah. quarters and stuff like that. Yeah, and then that will be lost to history. Nothing lasts um, long at the bottom of the sea. Bodies don't last long. Flesh is gone. <clears throat> then bones are gone. You know, I, you know, there's a bacteria. I think the reason, right? But I think the the urgency with recovering and the 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 reason that people wanted to recover the Marconi was because, you know, of the historical value to it. You know, um, the the wireless operators they fixed it literally the day before. The collision with the iceberg, yeah. you know, and if they could recover it, they might be able to see how they fixed it, why they fixed it, how it was broken. You know, they might be able to restore it and have it. You know, it's it's a great story, and you know, it it makes me. Uh... And it is, and it's a memorial to you know the life that was lost there. But the papers how say they stayed there. It's all about money. This is all about money. Stop in your pockets. Really? It's so not. <laughs> Where did you know? Yeah, the, what are you the cost about? to develop the technology to recover it, the cost to restore it, you know, but it's really a memorial to those two telegraph operators who stayed there literally to the last second to get the message out to save. Yeah. You know, because what if they hadn't got the message out that the Titanic oh, was sinking? It was the what voice if the of the hadn't come to pick up those people in the lifeboats? They would have all died there in the freezing cold and everybody on the Titanic would have died. I mean, yeah, you know, I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're aware of this, but we are, well, we, I don't know if it's still me, uh, we're planning on, and might still, um, look for the Mount Temple, which was, of course, involved in the sinking that night, um, but also was on the way from Canada to the, the British Museum, carrying dinosaur bones from Canada to England, and it was sunk, sunk by a German radar a raider somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, it would be awesome to find <laughs> and maybe recover surgically, laparoscopically, recover some of the dinosaur bones. But again, you'll know, take a look at the headlines. It just cracked me up. I woke up one morning and it said uh, the British government, American oceanographer angers British government me. Uh, I'm thinking, I did? <laughs> you do piss people off. No, <laughs> yeah, I angered the British government. First of all, they should talk about artifacts for crying out loud. The scrolling in the British amongst <laughs> all those British mummies they got there. Uh, you know, so I, I, I just don't think it's right. It gives the public the wrong you know, I worked for CNN as an analyst for a year about all right, Joanna. <laughs> Did you work for CNN? I took my cups down. You made me take my I had all my CNN cups behind me, but she complained on that wall back there. Um, uh, yeah, what I found was that the news wasn't always really exact <laughs> the news. And uh, and I see that's what happened. Well, you know, anything to get headlines that get people, so they always pump up the headlines. You know? Yeah, and with, even today, if I said that we found another nut and bolt from the Titanic, it would get, I swear, international coverage. Uh, they would uh, people would want to know tell me about this nut and bolt that you found uh from titanic it's mind-boggling uh, how much people want to know about titanic this is an interesting comment from um michael standard he said correct me if i'm wrong but the superstructure is gradually imploding this being the case when it all snowballs there won't be any question of going to recover anything it'll uh, all be covered up imploding falling in on itself yeah right 
Yeah. So that yeah. would be like the steel hull. Now I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. Is it really? Well, yeah. I mean, if it's going to, if you're, if you're going to lose the structure of the decks and the and the whatnot, it's going to fall down into the hull for the most part. I mean, it's you just end up with a giant heap of uh, metal at the bottom of the. Uh, of but that will take years and years and years. I don't know. I don't. Right. Well, there are places where it's got a good head start. You know, the captain's uh, bath, uh, captain's quarter. But you were on yeah. Drain the Titanic, and Drain the Titanic said that it would take many, many. It's on the Disney Channel. I hated that show. It's on Disney Plus. Yeah. Go watch it, guys. I'm not watching it. That's if you why... guys would like to see Dr. Gallo, you can watch Drain the Titanic on Disney Plus. Sure. I'll give you five dollars not to watch it. All right. It's we're... Very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know. I mean, I mean, what do you think, Dr. Gallo? I mean. What about Titanic? I mean, do you think it's imploding, really? Well, I, I don't I know that imploding is necessarily the word, but it's collapsing. Sure. I mean, over time. Yeah, it's it's, it's collapsing. It's gonna, like it's 20 gonna years, 50 uh, years, 100 oh, years. No, 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 don't do that. CNN thing like it was Malaysian air. So what do you think they were thinking about in the cockpit? Uh, I'm, <laughs> I don't know. Every day, every day they ask me the same question. How would I know? No, and China. So, I mean, but that's the truth. Nobody know. can really put a time a time frame on it. That's what I tell everybody because they're like, "Oh, well, the Titanic." Because I mean, people come to me all the time. Oh, well, Titanic. I heard Titanic to be gone in ten years. I'm like, no. They've been saying that for the last hundred years. No, Titanic's made of like steel, and it'll probably be around, you know, longer than your. There was there used to be uh, so to do the experiments. There's a woman, Lori Johnson, a Canadian scientist. She's excellent, and you leave these bits of metal around Titanic. They can study over time how the how they're attacked. And there used to be a whole bunch of them on the bow, and then somebody with a robot picked them up and dumped them over the side. Can you imagine that? Hmm. Dumped them off the bow because they got in the way of a television shoot. Hmm. Hmm. That's unbelievable. In my opinion, um, this may be a little controversial, but this should show you how strong Titanic actually was. Yeah. When she can last over 100 years under miles and miles of ocean, and the ocean is so pressurized. So when people say she was a weak ship, no, she wasn't. She's yeah. a very strong ship to last over 100 years. But that's my opinion. No, so. it's, yeah. Oh, it's going to be there. I, I, I don't think the hull's going to be gone in 100 years. You know, I, I, who knows? I mean, you know, it's been, well, I guess uh, Victor Vescovo went um, a couple of years ago and had a, a couple of hours at Titanic. But uh, no one's taken a real good look in 10 years, really. And it's probably going to be, unless Ocean Gate keeps going back, and it could be another 10 years. And that, that was our point with the Marconi. Is that if we don't, if it looks like it's collapsing now, and we don't do something now, and it's up, you know, make a decision. If you don't, if if you don't mind losing it, don't do anything. But we may not be back here for another ten years. So you know, if we have the opportunity, it can do it safely. Now is the time. You know, again, I have to remind you that it's not like just going to the out to the. It's not like going to Gettysburg. You know, we're going to a different world where. Um, again, the pressure is high. The it's pitch black. You have no navigation to speak of, like GPS, and so getting anything done is really really takes a talented uh, bunch of people to get stuff done. So, if you you know, we spent a lot of time, a lot a lot of time, people's time, coming up with that Marconi plan. Um, maybe it'll still happen. I I don't don't know. Um, it's that kind of detail that you have to put into it uh, to understand how long the how the uh, super the superstructure will still be uh, around. Steve Hall said it would be nice to place a microphone on the wreck for a week. Yeah, so I was saying a hydrophone. I would, it gives me the creeps uh, <laughs> thinking about it. But I, yeah, I would love to do that. In fact, we were planning on doing that. So uh, it already scoped out the people that could do it, the companies that 
to do it. So I thought we would put several around the ship, uh, in the ship, on the ship, and maybe in the ship so we could, again, you know, the winds, the currents are blowing all the time. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see what it sounds like. Ugh, making um, over here, I have stand up on the back of my head. It would be amazing he, if we could put a says, webcam. They, on oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kipper. It would be cool if we could uh, put a webcam on there, but then thinking that, all you would see would just be black. Probably, yeah. yeah. It, it Paul said, did they take requests for looking at areas from historians? Yeah. No, I we were ready to do that. I was going to say, at one time, they did take like suggestions from people. No, no that was part of the deal. We have Brett and... Uh, I, I've told various people that, you know, make a list, uh, let's talk about it. Not that we'd say, oh, yeah, let's go grab that, but at least put it on the table. Uh, you know, and I, I can't tell you what a pleasure it was. You know, I work with Bill Sauter pretty closely. I, 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 you know, he's like over up here and I'm down here. But uh, working with Bill, wow, wow. Uh, I mean, his work, uh, it's like, five PhDs worth of work and the stuff he's done. And I'm, uh, uh, so, uh, you know, Bill said, here's what I think we need to do this, 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 and this, that would get a lot of attention because, uh, you know, he knows that ship inside, outside, up and down. And, uh, but in general, like, you know, I think I've said it down here before, you know, we were game, uh, you know, what do we need to know? Tell us what you want us to look at. You know? I really hope that, you know, the new RMSTI will be as open to, you know, because I know that's something that, you know, Breton was always um, really, he was trying to be transparent. And I think that, you know, the former RMSTI, they were trying to be transparent. They were trying to be open to, you know, to the public. And you know, he said it in the office. He said it in the way over to Ireland. He said it late, late, late night in the pubs that we have to do the right thing for the ship and for the people that care about it. And, uh, you know, he, he meant that. Now, you can argue that what he was thinking was the right thing was the wrong thing, but, you know, he meant what he said that he wanted to do the right thing for the ship. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just in, you know, talking to him the few times that I did, you know, I thought he, I mean, he seemed fairly interested in doing the right thing. Yeah, um, sure. it'll be interesting to see what they're going to do moving forward. If they could just lose um, some of the baggage they have with some of the, you know, umbrella things that I, they have going on, it's just my a shame. Guess is the usual subjects will think there's a weak point in the mm -hmm. companies. There are certain people that want that company out of existence, and they're going to come out of the woodwork again and try to finish it off. You know, it's a uh, it makes me really annoyed and part of me wants to speak out loudly against it. And I might, if that happens, I may have to do that because it ain't right, you know, not right for the ship, not right for the company and certainly not right for people to have it again, to ha become this elitist playground where you have to sit back and watch, which is not bad, but no, it's not, it belongs to everybody that ship. Um. <clears throat> Eric Farley wants to know, have there been any uh, new discoveries of sea life found on the Titanic? Yes. There have been. I, uh, I yeah, remember that's seeing a, that in a documentary. Good question. That was one of my, uh, and I know Bill Lang too, is that the last time we went, we promised that uh, instead of going here or going there, let's go look at that, that we would do this painting the wall slowly and mowing the lawn and cutting the grass. Uh, so we didn't break away. but. Uh, yeah, we could see creatures in the distance and uh, around Titanic that were really interesting and who knows what's living on the inside. Um, you know, anytime there's something hard on the deep sea floor, uh, it becomes, if it's a rock, there'll be a creature sitting on it. Um, if it's a shipwreck, it gets inhabited right away. It becomes, and, and that makes it a great science experiment because you know within a minute or so when that thing hit the sea floor. But very quickly, animals make it their home. So, who knows what's uh, living in and around Titanic? You know, it's pretty interesting. Could be anything. Yeah. Sorry, you guys. My internet is slowing down. <laughs> oh. 
All right, hold on. My internet is like slowing down, way down. Okay, Steve wants to know where do we, where can he send his request um, for surveying the wreck? I guess they RMSTI canceled um, their expedition this summer, though. Yeah. I mean, it's all uh, was it up Steve? in the air. Was Steve, right? Was it where? Steve Hall? Yeah, Steve. Hall. Uh, Steve yeah, Hall, just for those of you guys yeah. who don't know, he, um, <laughs> which I can't imagine anybody not knowing, he wrote um, or co wrote um, Titanic, the ship Magnificent. Oh my God. I got that. Magnificent. So, I got that. Titanic, the ship Magnificent, Magnificent, and many other Titanic. Oh, is that the big, the big book? That's crushing my bookshelf, making my the big I, two books. Yes. Yeah. Hey, you ruined my bookshelves over there with that <laughs> giant. Everybody has has learned over the years that those books need to move to the bottom shelves. As I learned the hard way. Wow. <laughs> as I learned the hard way a few months ago, I was like, wait a minute, my bookshelves are bowing in. I have three, and I have three of them because I got fooled by the a, a, a cover, a different cover. So I have three. So they're really. Well, there's several different editions, um, yeah. but yes, so but, Steve, um, uh, they were taking suggestions and even suggestions of what artifacts to possibly put on a wish list. Yeah. But they had to cancel their. Um, oh yeah, we don't want to drop any of the volumes, volume one or volume two, Steve, on your foot. He said, "Don't drop volume one on your foot." <laughs> <laughs> but um, they really were. They were. They were asking. You know. Titanic enthusiasts or historians, um, you know, you know what parts of the ship they wanted to see, and you know, of a short wish list of artifacts. You know, if they, I, yeah, I wouldn't any, necessarily call it a wish list, but, but yeah, you know, uh, your opinion of, or opinion of, yeah, what we'll artifacts would be historically significant. Yeah, um, again, we never had that meeting about these are the artifacts we want to go get. This one, that one, that one, this this one. Uh, but I so I, in the olden days, you would just send it to me or the company or Breton or you know, Bill Sauter or you know, Joanna or whoever, they would get it. Uh, us. But now with this new era, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to deal with that or if they're even going to deal with that. Everything is just kind of like protected salvage rights. And uh, I don't know how that's going to play out either because it, it's been a long time since it's been. If you have silver rights, you have to show that you're continuing to work on the site, and it's been now over ten years. So I, you know, I think they have to go back out there. I just don't know who, who the expedition leader would be, and who would come up with the plan and all that stuff. So they were yeah. supposed to go back out this summer. Yeah. And they were going to recover the Marconi or attempt to recover the Marconi, and Look Dr. Gallo here was supposed then, to be a co-expedition yeah. leader, and yeah. um. All of that is just kind of. Yeah, I'm sad about that because I was thought that that would be a great way to that would be uh, to win with like uh, we basically uh, you know the, the lidar that would have been just awesome to be able to bring that back to people to see. Uh, I've seen examples of it that just blew me away. Uh, the lidar stuff because um, it's pretty amazing, but not going to happen this summer. You know, it's like the third time. Uh, we had to scrub it. Um, COVID got us twice. Uh, yep, COVID last summer and then this summer, financial issues, I suppose. And well, now it's like we we're trying to work it out. Yeah, trying, but it's not, you know, you're getting you're talking about five, six million dollars to get out there. True. Uh, do a halfway decent job. So. Yeah. It's just a shame though to go through all that to get all of that approved by the judge and then just have to scrap it. Because I mean, I remember last summer we were all writing to the judge in Virginia trying to get her to approve Marconi recovery. Yeah. It worked. And it worked. And this summer everything is canceled again. And it's just sad. Um, yeah, well. Uh, yeah, I haven't talked to Breton about it, but I don't it's know. It's disappointing. Uh, or anyone else, really, about it. I haven't talked to Billy about it. Uh, you know, I feel bad for people like Billy Lang. He was on watch that night, 1985, when they found Titanic. He was sitting right there uh, on that watch. And so he's had that part of his life forever and ever and ever. 
and uh, I know he's got unfinished business with Titanic, so uh, I was hoping we could give him that uh, that opportunity. Yeah. Well, I don't think anybody should give up hope yet. I mean, maybe this will be a good change for RMS Titanic. Well, I, I'm not being negative about it. I'm just, I just don't know what the future holds, and I'm just sorry, maybe a little bit bitter that the way that, you know, that the company never really had a chance uh, between COVID and then being dragged into court every time we turned around uh, and having, and you know, by the way, we won every time we got pulled into court. Mm -hmm. We won every single time. But the and sad thing is it costs a lot of money whether you win or not. Yeah, got pay lawyers and uh, fly people in and, and you know, I'm expensive, so. <laughs> <laughs> I need um, peanut M&Ms. As long as I have peanut M&Ms in my room. The thing yeah. is, though, and we've talked about this many times, I think that, you know, going all the way back to the George Tulloch days, you know, I think that one thing that, you know, they, the mistake that they've made along the way, they haven't had enough Titanic people involved. We were just talking about Titanic people a few minutes ago. After George Tulloch after you know the George Tulloch administration, I guess, you know, they didn't have enough Titanic people involved and it was, you know, some greed that got in the way. And then then it went into like a corporate type thing. And then, you know, if you didn't have enough Titanic people involved and if it, it was just run as a business and not, you know, by people who were Titanic people, then, you know, it just got run into the ground. Um, so I, I think that, you know, if they're going to do this and make this work and it needs to be done by Titanic people. And if it's not going to be done by Titanic people this time, then it's just going to be doomed to fail yet again. Well, like I said, don't be uh, shy. You should let them know, um, you know. Um, they need to get Titanic people involved. People who are passionate about Titanic, people who know about Titanic, people who are not going to have the wrong information on things in the museums people who, you know, who are passionate about it, who have had a lifelong passion for it, people who care about the wreck, who people who care about the artifacts, people who care about, you know, the legacy of the people who, who died that night, people who care about the legacy of the people who survived. Look, I'm trying to be serious. What is wrong with you? What? <laughs> I'm adding a serious moment. That's me teaching Jim about Titanic. Um, no, no, no. I, really David Gallo. I, I agree with you, but you know what, though, Joanna, is that you really, you really need to speak out. I don't know what to speak out to. Breton is gone. And... No, but you'll have an accident. Yes. Yeah, there's such a thing as email. You email the company and say, hey. hey. You have a lot of, actually, you have a lot of power. I have a you know? Facebook group. <laughs> You'd no, be like, you, you have ah, a lot of power. You have a lot. Of, you have a lot of power. Oh goodness, Nerna, you'd be surprised on what influence you can have on some people. Trust me, I've learned that. Yeah. I got the southern charm, Kipper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, howdy there. I need to ask you a few questions about our <laughs> Oh gosh, I don't. It's late. Um, it's late. Um, Let me have to scroll off. <clears throat> anyway, what happened to the Jim Cameron picture? Now know you just got a map. I don't know what you're talking about. I should probably watch that movie someday. Oh yeah, that's a good movie. But... No, I've never seen it. Tell you the truth, I've seen snippets of it. There's one scene you may want to skip. That's all I'm saying. Ow. Are there any questions in the chat, Joanna? That's what I'm looking for. Um. Let's see. Um, hostile Takeover, Giant Dave, 
Um, <laughs> um, Diane, Dave. <laughs> My head looks like something's wrong here. With that's better. <laughs> I'm getting squeezed this way. I don't think there's any more questions. If anyone has any questions in the chat, let them. I'm fly. trying to. See. My internet just like stopped. I hate my internet. No, um, you can't. So I'm gonna turn my attention to my to my rose garden. Your rose garden? What? It's like yeah. eleven o'clock at night. I have like all these no, different not, devices, I mean, and I'm just not. trying to see which one of them is working. <laughs> Actually, I got you right. The whole another video thing to do tonight, so it's I know. not about typing. Poor Dr. Gallo. <laughs> um. Oh, look, this one's working. Oh, Dan Curley says a night to remember, and the '97 ones are the only ones you need to see. I think um, Dan Curley, he's trying to say he hasn't seen the '97 one. How's it in? Mm, awkward silence. Uh, I liked it for the ship. Uh, the love story got me bored. Um, Dr. Gallo, weren't you a contributor or a consultant on the 97 one? Mm -mm. Nope. I was nope. in the uh, whatever that thing was when Jim tortured us. Uh, oh, 20 years later or? Yeah. Um, oh. With Bill Sauter and Ken Marshall. And that was intense. It was intense. The banana peel theory. Yeah, he brought us in, you know, seven o'clock in the morning. He had to be there and work all day long. Jim asking questions about the ship and was it, you wanted the movie to be as accurate as, as it possibly could be. Hey, you know, I got to tell you something. Uh, just look at Bob Ballard uh, was, I thought I could learn a lot from Bob when I came to Woods Hole because I was working at the time with the best people there were as a grad student. I really was. And uh, come over here thinking, Bob, well, wow. you know, when Bob called me, uh, I had a job offer already that I accepted from University of Hawaii. And they said, you know, here's, we got your money, we got your place, we got blah, blah, blah. And Bob called and said, I don't know if I can pay you. If I do, I don't know what I can pay you. And he said, I don't know what you're going to be doing. He said, but I promise you this, that whatever we do, it'll be the first time anyone's ever done it. And I said, that's it. Sign me up. So uh, what Bob Ballard has, you can't learn. I mean, it's just in here and in, in here. So the guy's uh, just amazing. And if he wanted to be the best uh, marine scientist in the world, he could have done that. But um, you know, he turned his attention to other things, education. He's one of them. So he's amazing. Jim Cameron. Uh, I, I posted this online once. If someone was saying who's the best oceanographer. He's amazing. And he says he only makes movies to pay for his ocean habit. The guy is incredible. And I would tell our engineers all the time. I brought a group out to see him in Santa Monica. And then he came here uh, to Woods Hole. And I said, don't baby this guy because you're going to end up looking pretty stupid. Amazing. Just uh, his brain is just, uh, uh, you know, never seen anything quite like it. So, uh, and the other guy doesn't get much credit, but a guy named David Mearns, M-E-A-R-N-S, who uh, he found the hood and a whole bunch of other, I think he found 26 ships. Uh, he is awesome. His research power that he has, uh, He's like uh, Sherlock Holmes and, uh, you know, and uh, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, he's like Sherlock Holmes in the way he approaches stuff. So I made a comment online that it was not one person. If I had to find a shipwreck, it'd be a combination of uh, Cameron and David Mearns so, are uh, as a duo, unbeatable. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Um. 
I would like to see Jim Cameron go back with like some new technology, like some wireless technology and go into the, you know, like deeper into the ship. I think that would be really cool. Oh, not me. Just Jim Cameron. I see. Fine. No, I would like to see him go back. <laughs> yeah. No, me too. I mean, he did things with Titanic that would tell we would have never tried in a bazillion years going in the way, you know, with the bots and things like that. I know. But now, like, later on, you know, with better technology, I think he could see more and do more. Anyway. Um, now I feel bad about myself. Why? Yeah, never mind. The last time you'll see me again. Why? I'm not coming back here after you treat me rudely like that. I didn't. Jim Cameron. Jim Cameron. Jim Cameron. No, I'd like to see yeah. him come back with new technology. I'm just joking. Well, maybe you could go with him if you watch his movie. Oh, like no. 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 no, I I hope he goes back, and he probably will go back, because like I said, he's got some unfinished stuff there to do, too, on the inside. Yeah, I've been hoping that for the uh, since like the last time we went. Uh, wasn't the last time we went it was like two thousand and was during the uh, during the uh, World Trade Center two thousand one. Yeah, I think he was out there. One. Mm -hmm. So they on my camera, on this camera during the World Trade Center attack. This is the camera I took out with me in two thousand and ten. It's full of uh, some incredible video, but. I lost all my cords to get it off here. It's all digital, but I'll figure it out. I think some good stuff. Have you? Did it? Sorry. I don't know. Um, Michael Standard says Jim Cameron has done more for the science surrounding Titanic in his own expense and at his own expense than just about anybody else out there. Mm, uh, I don't know if it was at his own expense. As an individual, yeah. As an entity, uh, RMS has done more than uh, Jim, but as an individual, uh, yeah. I mean, he's. Yeah. He's. I've learned so much from James Cameron, not just from his movie, but from his all of the documentaries he's been a part of. Yep. Um, he's been one of my Titanic idols since I was a kid. So. <laughs> Very smart man. Last time I come back here. <laughs> <laughs> but no one's smarter than you, David, Mr. David Gallo. No one's smarter than you. <laughs> he learned everything from you, right? You I was watching Jim Cameron know. stuff from the abyss on forward. I, I just think the guy's awesome. I, I really do. I like that movie. Um. Anyway. I don't see anything else out here. Does anybody have any more questions for Dr. Gallo? Anybody? Dave. Dave. Anybody have any questions? Anybody? Anybody? Going was there a basketball me? game tonight? Was it? The, did I goof up? Was there? I don't know. I don't watch sports. I just like Titanic. I was watching a baseball game when this thing started. <laughs> baseball. Yeah, you know the it's April. sport that Did they have you know, the, the, you know, the sport that you hit the ball with the stick. Well, I know what baseball is. <laughs> oh. Anyway, you know that makes me wonder. Um, so I know there was like a, wasn't there like a tennis player on Titanic? Was there any? I wonder if there were any other um like sports. I'm sorry, it's like after eleven o'clock. Um, I wonder if there were any other sports figures read my book. Um, on Titanic. That would be my book on sports. I've been telling you to write a book. No, stop. I don't have it. I can't. I have to, no, I was I don't. telling you to write a book, uh, but not about uh, the sports figures on Titanic. I'm sure Bill Sauter knows. You know, you maybe <laughs> remember that my neighbor that I've lived next to for almost 30 years, right there, one day uh, said, uh, I saw your lights on at three o'clock in the morning. I said, yeah, I was working on Titanic. He said, you know, I never told you this, but my great grandfather died on the Titanic. Thinking, oh, talk about a small world. Wow. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, I see some more comments coming in here. I know. Michael Standard said, 
he's looking forward to see, seeing us all at Pigeon Forge. Likewise, Michael. Eric Farley says, I'd like to still know how deep in the ocean the dock has been. I'm very curious. Dave, how deep, how deep have you been? Oh, the dock dock, this dock. Um, uh, well, wherever the length of the deepest is with Alvin. So about two and a half miles, about Titanic depth. Okay. Yeah. But you haven't been on a dive to Titanic, right? Nope. Just... Uh, this was, well, ugh, now you're depressing me. I actually gave up my dives uh, when I was with the Russians. I was going to get a dive and I gave it to someone I never thought would get a dive. And now he's had about 500 dives and I haven't had any. But I was up to planning to get the French back to Titanic because um, I thought that that would be great to close that loop. And that's where I'd get my dive. But, you know, it's not that, um, I don't know. I don't think I need to do that. I think you know, I'll let someone else do that. You know, if I had that at the end of my resume, dove to Titanic, you know, I, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of younger people that need to have that experience. Okay. Uh, you know what? I don't mean any, by the way, any, um, um, I'm not putting you down for being a Titanic fan. I'm not, you know, it's, uh, I understand it because once Titanic got a hold of me, it wasn't letting go. It was like an octopus um, where I wanted to do more and more and more and more. Um, uh, you know, I don't sit, sit up at night thinking about, you know, who was there, who was in what stateroom. Um, I think about how do we bring this back for people like you? Um, or how do we bring you to it? That's what keeps me awake. Um, okay, let's see. John Wilson says, you're a legend. Thanks for sharing. Oh, that's kind of you. Um, you're my only friend, John. John or Don? <laughs> uh, John, John Wilson. Thanks, John. Um, Dan You'll Curley be in my says, will. <laughs> Dan Curley says Charles Lightoller had a chicken farm later. <laughs> um, let's see, Terry Bass says Richard Norris sense. Williams and Carl Bear were two pro tennis players that, who survived the Titanic. There you right, go. Good to know. I knew there were some tennis players on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, sometimes my phone is slow with picking up these comments. Um, that's all that I see right now. Please forgive me if I've missed any. I'm looking at my tablet and my phone trying to see comments. I could read one off of my uh, chat thing. Uh, is it true you you're known as the Brad Pitt of ocean exploration? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> several, several women asked that question. <laughs> this is what happens when we do late night um zoom events guys i'm sorry <laughs> i'm gonna call you come help me clean my office it's after 11 o'clock for dave and i it's 10 for us <laughs> is it it's 10 15. <laughs> And please forgive me. I've had the co the first COVID shot and it hit me really hard. So I'm still kind of like, just not quite with the program. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, all right then. Well, if, um, let's see. Hi, Evan. Evan Shipcott just joined us. He Shipcott. says, hi everybody. Um, my echo in the background. We're actually good. What? I said I heard my echo in the background. All right. Well, well thanks for sharing. Um, we're, we're probably going to go ahead and wrap things up if nobody has anything else. Um, because I'm pretty tired. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is tired, just me. Um, 
Evan says he's ready for the Queen Mary to open. Uh oh, if we had um, Bill Sauter. If we had Bill Sauter on here, he could talk to you about the Queen Mary all it's night. Fascinating. Fascinating. Huh? It's fascinating. You know, Bill and I talk a lot, and it's always something that could be a 10 minute conversation. And I, we always talk for about two hours. At a, <laughs> I, the guy he just fascinates me, you know. I am, me too. We need to get him back on here. I need to um, confirm that. Bill, if you're watching, I'll message you tomorrow. We'll confirm a date. Um, but yes, yeah, so we need to get that settled. See, like, I'm losing my voice and everything. <clears throat> but anyway, this has been absolutely lovely. We really appreciate everybody who watched and everybody who had comments and questions. Um, Dr. Gallo, thank you for joining thank us. You. Thank you for your um, your opinion and your yeah. clearing some things up on the background of RMS Titanic Inc. Um, we are going to try to remain hopeful for the future of Titanic and yeah. RMS Titanic Inc. Um, hopefully, good things are ahead, and we'll just wait and see. Yeah, well, let's hope so. Um, yeah, just make your voice uh, known. But don't, <laughs> don't not don't sit back and think you shouldn't be part of it. You know, let, let people know what you think about the company. And like I said, I got no problem if you say this is all wrong. If as long as you come by it honestly, that's your feeling. But I'm not going to argue with that. I got it. Yeah. Um, but this has been great. Come back and see us anytime. Uh -oh. Um. Hopefully we can follow up on this. <laughs> Dr. Gallo's like, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we can follow up on this in a few months and say, look, the company's doing great. They're moving forward and, you know, um, staying strong. And um, uh, John Wilton's putting in a plug for his group, Collecting Titanic, which is a great group, by the way. It is. Um, thank you all for joining us here uh, at RMS Titanic Reflections. Um, hope to see you on the page and in the group. Um, also hope to see you in a Fox Star Line, which is also a great ocean liner group. Um, again, we hope to see Dr. Gallo. We certainly do appreciate him Dave. joining us tonight. Dave. Dave. And his swatch Dave, from the Call Thank him for, Dave. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure talking with you, Dave. Um, and thanks everyone for watching. Hope you all have a Good lovely evening. Nice meeting you, Dr. Dave. Dr. Dave. <laughs> Everybody enjoys tired. Titanic Month, and hopefully we'll be seeing you soon uh, with another event. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Keep calm and sail on. <laughs>